What's up guys, Doug Polk here, and as much as we like to joke around and have a good time on the channel, I've got something important that I want to talk to you about today. Now, I'm going to try and do my best just to kind of put it all on the table because I know there are going to be a lot of people that are going to be upset by the news that I have for you today, but I just kind of want to give an honest assessment of what I'm doing and why so you guys can kind of understand where I'm coming from. So let's kick this off by talking about PokerStars as a company over the last like 10 years or so. Now, I started playing poker online when I was 18, so I've been playing online for something around 10 or 11 years. In that time, my first and favorite site was always PokerStars. You know, I loved how clean the, the, clean the layout was, I didn't like how cartoony Full Tilt was, the support was great, the bonuses were awesome. You could 24 table, the dream guys, the dream. And really online poker at that point in the poker boom pre-Black Friday days, there were really two kinds of players. Players that played on full tilt and players that played on poker stars. And what they couldn't really agree on much, but what they could all agree on was that UB had some weird dudes. In fact, if you followed me back in those days, I was a big Poker Stars fan, including this infamous picture from when I was playing NL25 and grinding on Poker Stars. I loved it. I loved the layout. I was a huge fan of the site. And then as I came to know them more, I liked them even more. I mean, think about the moves that they made around Black Friday. Other companies went insolvent. UB went under. Full Tilt went down. It was called a Ponzi scheme at a national level. Well, Poker Stars still paid out everyone's balances in a fairly reasonable time frame, and then on top of it, bought back the full tilt poker balances and paid people back. I mean, these were the good guys. In fact, this was the only company in online poker where you could be like, I really trust them, and I'm happy that I'm playing here because these guys have my back. At least at the time, this is how I always envisioned the company. Poker Stars. We're more than just a business. We're a family of hardworking people dedicated to bringing you the best experience possible. It's that focus on delivering uh, superior customer service and a fabulous product. We want to bring back the passion, have some laughs, and unite fans around the world. That is our sole business. It is what we do, and it is absolutely crucial that we get it right and we do it. So give us another chance. After all, we're in this together. Now, as much as I loved those days at Poker Stars, they changed quickly when Amaya took over and started making a lot of controversial changes. And they did some things that were simply unacceptable. There's no doubt about that. The way that they pulled the rug out from under people with Supernova Elite, that was simply unacceptable. And no matter where I am or who I'm with, I will always say that. Before we go any further here, though, I'm going to have to say some things that I'm not really looking forward to, but in order to make this process work, I kind of need to say. And the first and probably most important thing is I just want to apologize to Daniel Negreanu. Because look, all right, he has said some totally ridiculous things. I still stand by that. But the degree of which I went after him was just uh, maybe a little bit too much. And he did make some valid points that I never really addressed. And I want to just dive in and look at at least one of those really quick. So here we have an example where we take a pretty standard game that we can see online nowadays where you, know, you have one player at the table absolutely crushing it, a few players barely winning, and then most players at the table uh, generally losing. Well, in this scenario, if the rate goes from, let's say, 2 to where these players are winning at 3 to 6, they can no longer play professionally and these players will all be gone. So these players are now out of the player pool entirely. It removes these small winners, which, you know, hurts them. You know, and that's really, those are the people I've always tried to stand up for. But let's take a look at the total effect of the game. You know, here we still see the, the top player winning, in fact, winning more despite the rake increase, because all of these players that were slight winners have been replaced by losers. So now the best player will win more money in the game, which is a pretty nice effect too if you're a strong player, which you should strive to be. And then the remaining players in the game, the majority of them are actually going to lose slightly less. You can see players 5 through 9 in the exact same game are now losing at only 11 instead of 12. So this is actually a positive for most people. It's just a few people lose their jobs. And while we need to be serious about that and understand that those are people, 
that are losing their way of making money. As a company and for the average player, this actually can help in general the entire player pool. There are a couple more subjects I want to jump into, but before we do that, I want to run a quick video ad from someone we're going to be seeing a lot more of here on the channel. We are anticipation. Committed. Bones hitting, no nipple having man. Anonymous. Focused. This is it. No, ten dollars cash. Holding it in. Yeah. Raise it. Whereas if the rake is too high, it's actually we better. Are poker. Here it is. All right, go ahead. Say what you guys say. Doug's a sellout. Everyone has their price. Okay, say what you guys say now because here's the thing. At some point, you gotta do what's best for you. And even though I know this is probably gonna upset some people, at the end of the day, I gotta do what's best for me. And look, I hope that they make the right moves in the future, but I can't promise they will. But what I can promise is that sometimes you have to do what's best for you. You know, I haven't won a tournament in literally weeks, weeks since I've won one. And what am I supposed to do to make money, you know? The YouTube revenue? My YouTube revenue doesn't even cover my cost. You know what I'm starting to think? I'm starting to think that you guys feel entitled to money that is not rightfully yours. If you deposit onto PokerStars, look, I'm sorry, I hate to break it to you, but is it really your money anymore? Yes, actually, it is your money. That, that, that was a bad, that was not a very good example. Let's take a look at the new fam. D-Negs in the house, Chris Moneymaker, Liv Bourie, Bertrand Gros Pellier, Jason Mercier, Jason Somerville. I was already sponsored the whole time. This is an unstoppable force. We got Spraggy, we got Finton, we even got Jesus up in this bitch. Wait, no, that actually that's Igor. All right, some of you might be asking, why poker stars? And look, here's the thing. Couldn't get into Comcast or United. It's a shame though. Could have done great things. You asking me about Mercier? Let's say average reg. On that note, we've updated the Upswing Poker merch to include some average reg shirts. Buy them now, they're selling like hotcakes. I'd like a moment of silence for our fallen comrade, David Bazoff. They're just hating on you because you were balling too hard, man. You ball, you were balling too hard, you, cl you flew too close to the sun. Why do bad things always happen to good people? And then also to bad people too. It happens to everyone. I'm gonna make you proud, Lee. I'm gonna make you proud. I'm gonna make you proud. Which is why, as of today, July 31st, I have decided to officially become sponsored by... Oh. Wow, thanks, I just had the craziest nightmare. Would never work for a company like that. I only work for legit companies that do good things for the community. 